Anchors Away is back. We are back from hiatus, which is a fancy word for to kind of a break. We had a lot of things going on, but we're back now. Want to welcome the panel as usual. Ashley Ketz, Mallory Brooks, Chief Keith Monahan. We've got a lot to talk about. We just got done actually talking about all the good stuff. Um, before we came on. <laughs> the good stuff that we can't let you hear. Oh, the yeah. juicy <laughs> stuff. That would have been good. Maybe we'll, one day we'll weed some of that stuff in. <laughs> on our last day. But, uh, <laughs> yes. yeah, and it would be our last day. Last day of employment, yes. um, probably. <laughs> but uh, we've got a lot of things we're, we're, we're going to talk about. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about uh, winter weather. Chief's going to uh, fill us in on some of the forecasting nuances for this, especially in this part of the country. And uh, we've got some something headed our way. We're also mm. going to talk about election night that came and went for the majority of the candidates. There's still a, uh, a campaign underway for Little Rock mayor and a runoff election that's going to be held early December. And then we're going to talk about some things that are coming up on KERK that you might find interesting. Um, we find them interesting because we've worked on them and they're coming up. Mm. But uh, first, let's start with, uh, with the winter weather. Mm. This is uh, yeah. just to give a time frame on where we are. This is Tuesday when, when we tape this. So we've got yeah. some, some stuff headed Tuesday our way right now. So if someone watches this on a Friday over the weekend, yeah, yeah. it's it's called history. It's it'll be history at that. It'll be history less at that point. We can but check your forecast. Then. You That's right. Forecast. We'll see how yeah. accurate it was. But yeah, Thursday? most accurate, most accurate in the state of Arkansas mm -hmm. by a long shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, a lot of, I don't want to get off on too much attention, but uh, there's this company called Weather Rate that actually grades forecast, and we have been ranked consistently for the past six years. Going to be seven. I'll give you a little hint. It's going to be seven years as the most accurate forecast in the state of Arkansas, which is kind of cool for, for our team. Um, speaking of forecasts, yeah, we had a little bit of snow yesterday, a little bit of snow this morning. I know Mallory's kids were, you know, hey, a little bit of snow falling, right? <laughs> she was pumped. She woke me up this morning and said, let's I see if it snowed. So I, I ran and saw a few tiny little flakes and I, I thought she's going to be disappointed, but I, we have her reaction. This is her reaction to just a few, whoa, all the praise hands. She was If that's how she hot. reacts to a couple flakes. Oh, her mind will be ready. blown. Um, when but she sees the real she stuff. She was so excited in my heart. It's so much fun. You know, snow is always fun, oh, but then when you yeah. have kids, they just think it is the greatest thing in the world. So all mm -hmm. this to say, Keith, we're counting on you. Yeah, it's not fun to forecast always, especially no. in this part no, of Arkansas, the state. Arkansas, I'll tell you what, I've been in a lot of places. Arkansas is a tough place to forecast winter weather because we're kind of so much on the line of, you know, too close to the Gulf of Mexico, but still close enough to get the Arctic air surges that come out of the northern and central plains. But tomorrow, what's going to happen is we are going to see an area of tomorrow, Wednesday. Of course, this is Tuesday, 2.30 p.m. ish. <laughs> tomorrow, Wednesday, area of low pressure comes out of the Gulf of Mexico, goes east of the Mississippi River. At the same time, an upper level low is going to go right over, right over Arkansas. Upper level low, basically a pool of very cold air in the upper atmosphere. And there's going to be enough moisture and enough cold air to give us at least, uh, well, there's, it's going to snow in Arkansas tomorrow. The question is, how far west does that snow get? Right now, it looks like the best chance of snow is going to be along the Mississippi River. Who would have thunk it, right? Mm -hmm. Along the Mississippi River. Hmm. Now, the back edge or the western edge of the snow might get close to Little Rock, but mainly for areas. Who, that map is still up there. That was supposed to be embargoed. I'll uh -oh. tell you what. Uh -oh. All right, this is kind of all right. You're getting a, you're getting a free preview. Okay, you don't have to pay for this preview. <laughs> That's kind of my thinking right now, and where the snow is likely to be occurring. The, the, the darker gray areas where there's going to be very, very little impact, roughly from uh, right around Batesville, your hometown, Ashley, through the Searcy area, Lone Oak down to Pine Bluff, over toward the Warren area in far southeast Arkansas. The, the brighter white colors is where there's a chance of more significant accumulating snow, which could be as much as perhaps two to three inches up around the Jonesboro wow. area over toward the Boothville, Missouri. So that's Missouri. a legitimate snowfall. Ooh. For Arkansas, it's yeah. legitimate. For people around the Great Lakes, not it's so like a summer afternoon. Well, yeah. at, least yeah. it's not, <laughs> at least it's not next week on one of the busiest travel days. That's right. right. So that, that would cause tomorrow problems. looks like the we might see light snow or flurries beginning around three. I think Little Rock may see some light snow or flurries. It shouldn't be a travel problem for us as of right now. But the roads are going to be cold. It's going to be down in the mid 20s tonight, Tuesday night. Tomorrow only in the mid, maybe upper 30s for highs. So uh, we're going to be primed to see some slippery spots on roadways, even. And we all know this in Little Rock and elsewhere across Arkansas, the smallest snow amounts have the biggest impact mm -hmm. because stuff mm -hmm. is still open and people are going to work and school. I'd rather get like a foot of snow, shut everything down and everybody stays off the highway. Right. But that only happens 
it's on kinda Christmas like you, Day in 2012. You, you oh, get in never. that zone where you know people are comfortable driving when it's not the best mm -hmm. of conditions for them. Right. Drive. So make sure you watch tonight and uh, at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. No, we don't have that many newscasts. Yeah. Four, five, six, and ten. And uh, make sure you watch uh, Wednesday morning uh, for the latest updates as we get a little bit closer. A little storm uh, has some potential to cause some headaches, but uh, those little ones sometimes can sneak up on us and uh, really make life tricky. And just a ref, and we're talking about this is a Wednesday. Okay. Right, we're talking Wednesday. Tomorrow is the 14th, so if you're into watching Into Thursday this, morning. Uh, into we're Thursday morning, but I think Thursday morning mainly for Northeast Arkansas, okay. Batesville, Jonesboro. Uh, up into the Missouri boot heel. Uh, but overall, just take your time tomorrow. Just mm -hmm. If you see some snow falling, forecast. especially east of Little Rock, you know, especially into tomorrow night when the roads are going to get cold again, just take your time and uh, everything will be fine. You don't need to do 70, even though the speed limit's 70. Just because yeah, the road tailgate. Yeah. That's one of the yes. biggest pet yeah. peeves out there people driving too close mm. behind you mm -hmm. and then you, you get all kinds of problems. Mm. All right. So, Perfect. We've got that all set up. Uh, one thing that uh, we don't have to worry about the weather, and that was a concern when folks headed out to the polls. We had an election wrap up um, last week, which was kind of all the usual suspects. There weren't a lot of surprises. Uh, governor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Prince Hill, and, and it seemed that everybody that was uh, forecasted to retain mm -hmm. their seat did. Mayor's race, though, and you covered this a lot. That came down to an, an interesting conclusion. Yeah, we we knew it was going to be close, mm -hmm. just because you know when we were out in the community, it, we were we had the idea that this is going to be a close race, but I don't think anybody anticipated it would be that close. But um, we're now a runoff. Frank mm -hmm. Scott Jr. He came in with the most votes, and so he's taking that momentum into this runoff. But you're also seeing Baker Curris out doing a lot of campaigning as well, and. Early voting that starts right after Thanksgiving, so we're going to have to see what happens. And I know that Warwick Saban, well, who yeah. just barely missed the runoff, and interesting, he has decided he's not endorsing anyone yeah. publicly. Now that doesn't mean he isn't going to, you know, talk probably behind the scenes to people, mm -hmm. but he's not going to come out and endorse anyone formally. It looks like come to this because it was because uh, um, Warwick had gotten in so early, yes, and and really hit the ground running and was out there and then then there um, then I think Frank got in Frank Scott mm -hmm. Jr. got in and then Baker Curris got in there and then he really I mean he brought in a whole bunch of votes mm -hmm. and I think his name recognition as the uh, was an attorney but also for a short time he was superintendent of Little Rock School District so he had that on his side and even more decisions adding up with the police chief situation mm -hmm. that we have so yeah. the mm -hmm. new mayor is going to have a lot of work on his desk January 1st and it's always been an interesting dynamic to the the way Little Rock is run the city government is run because it's a uh, city manager position mm -hmm. and the mayor is um, when Mark Stola became mayor uh, became a full-time position but there's still a lot of nuances in how it's run the mayor is not the boss of the city mm -hmm. Right. Keith, you know, you and I have talked about this. How well, I mean, you know, the, the mayor sets policies and he has an agenda that the city manager carries out to the best of his ability, I presume. I'm, I'm not from Little Rock. I live in uh, unincorporated Saline County, so I don't vote for mayors. So anywhere. you though, you're out there in Saline County, yeah. you get you, you guys know, do things differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit differently. You know, we just got power just a short time ago. <laughs> we have water now. No, I'm just kidding. Great. Color TV is next. <laughs> Color TV. No, Broad TV. Uh, broadband is on the way. So it should no, be we got broadband. I'll um, tell you, we have broadband now in our neighborhood, and we live, you know, with a bunch of other folks in the neighborhood that, you know, four to eight acre plots. And uh, we actually have broadband. I, my speed at home is now just as fast as my speed of internet Ooh. at work. So that's, that's kind of nice. cool. So you can work from home. Oh. That's what I'm pushing the boss for. But hey. I'm going to paint one wall that's of my cool. office green, that's and I'll just do it all from there. Oh, absolutely. There. Go out live <laughs> to yeah. uh, Keith. So it's uh, it will be very interesting to see voter turnout. I, I'm interested mm. to see how many people will come out because, you know, we saw huge early voting yeah. numbers. We saw huge voting numbers um, on Election Day as well. That was for several races. This is for one race. Mm -hmm. And uh, very interested to see how many people come out. I know they have opened it up for a week of early voting, which is good, which should give people more of a chance. But um, yeah. hopefully people can get out um, because as tight as that race was, it will be a very so interesting outcome. it's so important to get out there uh, and exercise that right to vote. Well, mm -hmm. you know, it's great to yes. see the big turnout. Mm -hmm. We've got a runoff. Doesn't mean that this one isn't. I mean, this is it's more important than, Every the, than the first one. Every vote's going to count. Every mm -hmm. vote, as gosh, we always say. Well, runoff, look at Florida. Runoff, if you look runoff, at what's going on in yeah, Florida right yeah. now, every runoff vote traditionally twice they're counting. Mm -hmm. Runoffs traditionally <laughs> right. only get, you know, 20, 25 percent right. turnout. Isn't that a shame that 20 or 25 percent of the people in the city get to decide who the mayor is? 
true. Mm -hmm. We think 50, 55% turnout is good. It should be 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, get out there and vote, folks. Vote, vote for well, if you don't who vote, closely matches your ideas for mayor. If you don't vote, you forfeit your right to complain right. about <laughs> anything else that happens. So, um, mentioned we're, we've been really busy with elections and also uh, throughout the month of November, we're very busy with uh, a number of special reports that we like to put together. Um, you've got one coming up that will be Wednesday night, tomorrow night. That's right. It's already on KRK.com right now, which is great, so you can go watch it. Um, it's a cold case that happened near my hometown in Izzard County, just north of Independence County. And the victim was around my age. So I always, I, I had this connection to the story, but I had never heard about it at the time in 2004 when it happened. Um, Rebecca Gould, she was a college student. She was 22 years old at the time. She had just moved from that area to the Fayetteville area to go to community college and had come home one weekend to visit some friends and her boyfriend and she went missing. And it took about a week. There was a huge search um, effort everyone in the community came out to look for but her body was discovered on the side of the road just outside of Melbourne and ever since then her family they still don't have a lot of answers about what really happened state police took over the investigation shortly after because it is such a small area mm -hmm. but it's been 14 years you know they're calling it a cold case state police tell me that you know it is an active investigation sure but they're always they Mm -hmm. and, and there's been they an investigator who is based out of the Mountain View area, very close to that area, who's been on the case since day one, pretty much. And, you know, they're working this case, but it's been interesting because a new set of eyes has come on. And private yeah. investigators, you see families do this all the time. They bring in someone, but this girl, she's from that area too, but lives in New York, and she is into the true crime podcast world, which if you follow podcasts, mm -hmm. they're, they're really big I, right yeah. now. A and lot of true women. true crime thing is huge. Yes. The Big viewers following. are women, yes. um, the majority. Um, we Which like scares to me. <laughs> um, so she's right. She's come into Arkansas and planned to stay a couple weeks. Ended up staying two months this summer wow. doing her own investigation. There's no case file available. She had to start from scratch. And so you can follow the investigation in real time along with the podcast. It's airing right now wherever you get your podcast. It's called Hell and Gone. If you want to follow the case, it's dedicated just to Rebecca's case. You know, it fascinates me. So and it's every week I'm on the edge of my seat and I can't wait. Wow. This is to probably listen. something that you've run into, you know, covering a story like this and other ones that you've done. When you've got a case that's 15, 20 years old and investigators have looked at it, looked at it, looked at it, and they just can't figure out what's going where. And then a whole new set of eyes comes in, another trained investigator, and they go, what about this? And everyone goes, oh, we didn't think about connecting mm. that. Right. Or, or wow. a piece of evidence turns up that they'd overlooked before. And it's great to see investigators go, yes, we want another set of eyes to look at this or we're welcome to it. I mean, there's a little territorial thing there. Exactly. And she's sharing most of that, I mean, all of that information to police. She's even taken witnesses and walked them to the police station. So she's pushing all that information to them because, you know, it is, it is still... Yeah an investigation that is is run by state police but we hopefully we can we can get some justice for Rebecca that's what her family is hoping for krk.com has that yes right now mm -hmm. all right guys thanks very much Thank welcome you. back I know you're all on vacation the last couple weeks oh yeah we've been <laughs> yeah. taking it easy to get these things done but no, <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same thank you very much for joining us for anchors away let us know what you think about the show and let us know some topics that you'd like for us to discuss here have a great day